A group of grade 9 York School students traveled out west to Squamish, British Columbia to examine the anticipated impacts of the wood fiber liquefy natural gas processing and exporting facility. The wood fiber LNG is a liquefied natural gas plant which is being proposed to be built on the wood fiber site just south of Squamish. Unfortunately, we were unable to record our interview with John French, the manager of public relations for the wood fiber liquid natural gas plant. So we retrieved the wood fiber promotional video about the project. Wood Fiber LNG Limited is proposing to build a modestly sized liquefied natural gas processing and export facility. The facility is licensed to export about 2.1 million tons of LNG per year. This will bring responsible economic growth to the nearby community of Squamish and to the surrounding area. But every time we hear the word prosperity coming from the government, we go, oh shit, here we go again. Their pros prosperity means our demise. We discussed the potential environmental impacts with residents of the House Sound. We interviewed Brent O'Malley, the owner of Bowen Island Sea Kayaking, Derek A. Jang from the Vancouver Aquarium, and Edith Tobe, the executive director of the Squamish River Watershed Society. Plenty of environmental impacts. So we talked about the impact of the ships themselves, uh, uh, the wake that these large ships uh, create as they're traversing through the water, and the damage that that wake can cause to the foreshore environment, the erosion that, tho that those, uh, the energy from those waves can cause. The largest herring spawn in uh, in Howe Sound is right beside the wood fiber LNG uh, uh, site. One species that we're seeing big returns on as of late are Pacific herring, an animal that unfortunately was wiped out by some unsafe treatment, uh, treatment of our oceans and had very low numbers for a number of years, but has more recently been flourishing in our waters. We know from the studies that we've done with the Watershed Society that the foreshore, the shoreline around the site, it's very heavily utilized by salmon, by herring, by all sorts of aquatic life. Spotting returns of things like these is, however, also resulting in marine mammals increasing in numbers off of our waters. Year after year, we're seeing orcas, dolphins, uh, gray whales coming up to our waters. All of these have to be factored in when you're talking about opening up shipping lanes to a heavy industry like LNG. The sound from the, uh, from the ships will certainly negatively impact marine mammals and their ability to echo, locate and communicate with each other. Uh, we've seen over the last uh, five years a real resurgence of marine mammals in Howe Sound. We're not going to, uh, th that would certainly be negatively impacted. Uh, let me explain for a second what, L uh, what happens. LNG, liquefied natural gas, becomes liquefied by supercooling the gas. And, uh, they cool it by sucking in seawater um, and they need to run it through these turbines uh, which uh, will keep the turbines cold in order to uh, compress this gas into a liquid. Um, that seawater is then put back into the sound um, 10 degrees Celsius hotter than when they took it out. A shift in temperature is something that can be very concerning for certain organisms. Environmental potential disaster, we know that they've got a cooling system that they're planning to put very heated water into house sound. That's going to affect the waters. Along with the environment, we analyzed the potential economic effects of the wood fiber LNG plant. Wood fiber LNG will bring economic benefits to the local economy. The project will provide more than 650 jobs per year of construction. Once in operation, the project will create more than 100 long-term family supporting jobs in the local community. We were lucky enough to discuss this project with Patricia Heinzman, the mayor of Squamish. Uh, they say that there's about 100 jobs at this site, uh, a lot of that skilled labor, most of that will be skilled foreign labor just because we don't have a real robust uh, LNG industry here. Uh, the provincial government is saying that the, uh, uh, the industry is going to provide all sorts of jobs locally, that's actually not true. It will provide a certain number of jobs during the construction of the, of the plant, but once the plant is construct constructed, there will be about 20 full-time jobs that are required uh, 
to work there. And will contribute an estimated $86.5 million each year in tax revenue to all three levels of government. The challenge is, of course, if this isn't a sustainable economic model, you get used to having that 4 or $5 million of tax revenue. In 12 years, in 15 years, that business that goes out of business, you all of a sudden have a 4 or $5 million hole in your tax base. Tourism brings in, uh, in House Sound, millions of dollars a year into the local economy. Uh, liquefied natural gas will bring in zero. It's like the town who um, says, oh, we're, let's go after that prison because, you know, there's 400 jobs building the prison and then there's 300 jobs being a line screw and, uh, you know, all the different myriads of jobs in the prison. But then what happens is you're the prison town and, you know, you don't get the biotech company because they don't want their brand associated with the prison town. I don't see an economic base in Squamish. I don't see any employees being hired in Squamish for the plant. I see it all being offshore. With all of this in mind, we can conclude that the wood fiber LNG plant is an ineffective short-term and long-term solution to the environmental and economic prosperity of the Howe Sound area.